Hi everyone, welcome to X444.3 C Sharp Programming. My name is David Gewertz. There we go. I wanted to start off with this introduction to give you a feel for what this course is going to be. I'm really here to teach you programming. Most of you are going to be looking for a job or a gig or to improve your career one way or the other. And so my purpose in this course is to help you become better programmers, and in particular, good solid C-sharp programmers. And so what I'm going to do throughout this course is I'm hoping to give you a variety of these little server-side chats, if you will, along with your primary course material. Now I want you to keep in mind that C Sharp is a, of a class or of a family of programming languages. So for example, if you learn to program in C Sharp, you'll be able to program in C, C++, Java, Objective-C, uh, which is used on, on iPhones and iPads and things like that, as well as, as, well as Macs. Uh, and likewise, if you come with a background in C++ or Java, or one of the C-related languages, you will be pretty comfortable with C Sharp. There are some differences in the structure of the language, but they're, they're relatively nuanced and, and they're not major. Likewise, there are some differences in the operating environment that you're talking to .NET with C Sharp, whereas, for example, if you're used to programming on the iPad, you're talking to the, the iPad API or vice versa. But the point is, is that this stuff is transferable, it's transportable. So once you are able to program in one C-related language, and frankly, in one, um, one language in general, you're able to move on to other stuff. So for example, if you're able to program in C-sharp, picking up something like PHP should be pretty straightforward, and so forth. So my goal here is not to teach this thing at, for grades per se, but to teach you to be programmers. And so... My viewpoint is much more what is going to be required for somebody going into a programming gig. Now, I've managed a lot of programmers, and I can see the difference between different kinds of people. There are people who are very skilled programmers, there are people who are new to it, but mostly there's people for whom programming is just something they have to do, and others for whom programming is something that's really interesting to them. And the key is, is that the folks who program and who want to program and who learn to program are better programmers than those who just want to get by in a class. And so that's one of the things I want to point out is that, you know, you learn programming by programming as opposed to just studying. It's really important to understand the difference between those two things. And in fact, I want to talk to you about the difference between the mechanics of programming and the course and the spirit of programming and the course, because those are two different activities as well. The, the course materials, the online course materials, are designed to teach you the mechanics of programming. They're designed to get you into being able to create things like a, a temperature conversion application and be able to launch it and see how it works and understand the basic language structures, understand the basic user interface structures and things like that. The spirit of programming is more about the career related issues and that's the stuff that I'm hoping to cover in these video lectures and through talking to you online and through comments back and forth and so forth. That is not something that is a course requirement. You don't have to watch any of these videos. You don't have to uh, follow the, the career guidelines I give you or any of those sorts of things. That's optional. But since most of you are looking to expand your career, it makes a lot of sense to do so. So that's where I'm going to be coming from in this process, is getting you to the point where you're able to be more attractive to somebody who is going to do a hire. And I want to give you a, an example of the kind of difference between the type of person who just takes a course and wants a grade and the type of person who learns a skill with some degree of spirit attached to it. Let's say, for example, you run a custom auto shop and you're hiring some new people to come into your custom auto shop. Yeah, you've hired many, many experienced uh, people who've built hot rods, who've competed in nationals, things like that. But you you're, you have an opportunity to bring in somebody entry level and you've got a couple candidates. One person has on his resume that he took an auto shop course. Another person shows up in a rat rod with great pictures of the the work he's done, the rebuilds he's made, you know, the, the, the kinds of hacks he's done to his vehicle, and has shown that he's really into cars and car maintenance and car repair and tuning and all that sort of thing. You're probably not going to hire the guy who just said, oh, I took a course and therefore please hire me. What you're going to do is most likely hire 
the person who is into this thing that you're trying to hire somebody for, the person who shows some you know degree of, of focus and interest and, and spirit, again, in the work they're doing. And that's what I want you to understand is that I have taught tons of people who've come to take a programming course because they saw it on ads in the newspaper and it said, okay, you know, you'll make X dollars as a programmer. And so they decided they take a programming course, they can put it on their resume, and suddenly they become a programmer. The thing is, is that programming is one of these disciplines where it's really, really obvious, really, really quickly whether you're good or not. And what I mean by that is, I mean, fundamentally, either your code works or it doesn't. So if somebody takes a, a programming course and doesn't apply themselves while taking the course, and then they go get a job, within a few weeks, it's going to be really obvious that they can't code. Whereas if somebody's gone out and, and built program after program on, their, on the side, built custom projects, maybe made some shareware, built a website, really gotten into the spirit of learning this art, craft, and skill, they're much more likely to be able to hold down the job and be good programmers. So your job here as students is to make it through the assignments and turn in the assignments. That's the minimum. That is what you can do to get a grade in this course. But what you need to do to become hireable, to be mer marketable, to be able to compete against all the other people who want the same gig you do, is you need to become reasonably good and reasonably practiced. And that means do this stuff for real. Enjoy it. Try it out. Build some programs on your own. Take on little projects from time to time. I'm not going to require you to do any of that at all. And the course does not require you to do any of that. And the university certainly doesn't require you to do any of that. But it will make you more marketable. It will make you more appealing to the people you're going to when you're trying to get a job or if you're trying to get, for example, funding for a company or if you're trying to take on a project of some kind. The more skill, experience, and frankly, the more of a portfolio you can show people, the better you'll be. Well, I'm going to wrap it for now. Um, I'm going to give you one more piece of advice and then we'll do more of these little chats. I will do one on grading and we'll do one on uh, comments and we'll do one on testing and we'll do more besides those. But I want to wrap this up with one suggestion. There is a student lounge in this course. And and this course, if, if you're not aware, is, is done independently, which means when you start is going to be necessarily different from when all the other students start. So you may come in with two or three students at the same time, but there will be others in this course who've been in the course for a couple months. And so you're not going to be at exactly the same point through the duration of the course. But the student lounge is a great place to meet other students. Building connections with other professionals is really, really important. So I really encourage you, in addition to the, the required discussion post where you introduce yourself, I really encourage you to go to the student lounge, post, share, get to know the other students, because that will become also very useful to you as you move through not only this course or other courses at, at the UC Berkeley Extension, but through your career as a programmer and potentially as a manager and a professional or even an entrepreneur or founder. So all of these things are, are designed really to, to help you move forward. They're all pretty easy. They're all fun. They're things that are all doable. So I really encourage you to get started with your code, get started programming with, with C Sharp. This is going to be a fun course. The projects are pretty neat, and it should be pretty easy if you apply yourself and do your work. And then, if you have time, do some of this extra work to make yourself more marketable. That's it for now. I'll talk to you in the next server-side chat. My name is David Gewertz, and I hope you have a great time programming.